Okay, so we start with uh, our Hyper-V and lights out and action. So, yeah. So we need two VMs. It could be one domain controller and one member server or two member servers, it's up to you because it's kind of a local lab. Yeah, you can use it better. Mm. So exam one, please go for that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, so we need one domain controller and one member server or two member servers. It does not matter. Uh, anyone else? Anyone give the exams? No? Yeah, I filled it in. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, you did not show up. Okay. Oh, okay. Successfully. <laughs> oh, man. So, next date, exam next date is what? Or this is it? Okay. Like, you're not, no, I'm never going to give the exam now. Oh, okay, anyway. So, but that's a good guy. Guys, he's attempting, he's trying. So, all others are not even trying. That's wrong. Yeah. Yeah, and even then you're committed or not. <laughs> yeah, so dumps are here. I think it's for six month uh, subscription, right? So and you can give it in eighty dollars, eighty three dollars, right? So it, this is an opportunity, and you're not availing that. You do not want to learn it the hard way that you should have given the exam or started preparing for the exam now. So try to start the exam now. Uh, only Lou has passed one. And uh, when is the second one, Luke? Uh, I was planning to take this week, but I'm in the world. You the delayed it, right? Panamic. You're panamming too, okay. Panamic. 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 Next set. So I'm right, writing here, Lou. Next set. All others, uh, please. Uh, you need to pay a fine for not giving the exam. And uh, uh, I'll think of what menu. I'll think of the menu. Yeah. You were saying? I was saying like I took one exam but I failed. Okay. But I will take it again in September. Free second shot. Free second shot. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So Bilal. Oh, scenario questions in four ten. Yeah. Scenario? It's not, not scenario, like uh, statement, and there will be one. Uh, all are same answers. Okay. And you put one which is asking for something, second one is asking for something else. Oh. So like this was control. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah. Try to be careful of that. Yeah. Try to give the exam. Try to try to give the exam and try to. Okay. Whatever. Uh, so um, yeah. Try, try again. If you once, you know, not succeed, uh, like that itsy bitsy spider, you can just try, try again. Uh, what example? Okay, so today we are doing Hyper V. So for that, uh, first thing I'm writing down here is that uh, we need uh, two servers, and uh, uh, we're gonna be number two is install Hyper V roll on both third step is uh, if we get an error then try the uh, work around uh, I'll send the document for that uh, till now uh, we need to get it uh, up and running so uh, the document that I'm sending is <coughs> Okay, so 
six or seven from Hyper-V only. Oh, and again, uh, sorry. This time it was like, it was because I selected all, what is the experience? Low, all low. <laughs> so this means that questions were e supposed to be easy? No, no, I think it's a better thing. Probably that he doesn't have experience, he shouldn't have passed. Oh, <laughs> so they made it more difficult. So good models. Oh, uh, that's a good one. All right, so, yep. Oh uh, yeah, we're still covering mixture of all the critical content that is in the market. Yeah, 410, 411, 412. Yeah, come coming and going. Yeah, back and forth. Oh. Okay, so at least you have the exam prep that you can do. So that this is 410 and 412. So we're covering uh, some uh, of the content of four, most of the content of 410, and some of the content of 412. So third exam and first exam. Yeah. Okay. Wow, you're so excited, yeah. You know. Hey, you should write down all these experiences and let us know in your in the group as well. You're gonna be celebrity. Oh. Okay, so our group is uh, cohort uh, six nowadays, and uh, hyper V work around. Uh, the document is here and how to install Hyper-V inside VMware Workstation 10. Oh yeah, that too. Okay, so 2 megabyte, 3 megabyte, yeah, it's gonna go through I guess. So. Um, uh, let's start these machines and if I so uh, what I'm doing is I'm on uh, the domain controller if I log in there uh, just to show you why we are d we need the workaround and what is that for so if I go to server manager and if every one of us are there then uh, on the dashboard add roles and features and uh, on the dashboard add roles and features everyone knows this place right so next, 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 three times. When you go to the Hyper-V role and click this, add features. So this error comes. And please confirm if everyone is getting this error. So what you need to do is, yeah, what you need to do is, if I cancel out from here, uh, it's uh, on the dashboard of either server one or domain controller, server two or server one, doesn't matter. Add roles and features whichever server you are, add on features, and three times next, 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 until you reach the roles, then you click Hyper-V. When you click Hyper-V and click add features, uh, this Hyper-V cannot be installed, a hypervisor is already running. Anyone knows what's hypervisor? It's visor, right? Yep, uh, sorry? It's the middleware. And the? So it's the middleware between the hardware and the and the operating system. So what is the operating system we install? So nope. So uh, uh, there's a type one hypervisor and there's a type two hypervisor and there's a type two diabe diabetes as well. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Okay. So, anyone? What is type one and type two? Type one is uh, bare metal. Type two is bare metal. Bare metal. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Because I always yeah, it, it could be. One and two. <laughs> it could be. Yeah, uh, that's. Which came uh, first? Uh, which came first, egg or chicken? Yeah. Oh no! Uh, which came first, like uh, type one or type two? Yeah. Uh, I thought you were asking egg or chicken. So. <laughs> Okay, if you got this error, uh, you're going to discuss about all that, but I want you to get uh, up and running on this. So, in order to avoid this error, this error is just saying that 
VMware Workstation is already a virtualization solution. It's a type one hypervisor. So if there is already a rival company hypervisor, so you know that Windows Hyper-V is a rival company for VMware. So it's not going to let Hyper-V run on it and we're gonna make VMware think that, hey, it's your friend, come on. Uh, give us a break, give him a break. <laughs> Hyper-V is having a big future actually. So it's in many interviews now guys, so let's be mucho serious. Uh, and let's shut down those two machines where you intend to install Hyper-V. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's working. Cool. Okay, thanks. And uh, the second document is still thinking to attach. And I could push it like this. Okay, it didn't work. Okay. So the thing is that, uh, oh, it works. Okay, push more, more, more. Hey, pushing works. See? Okay, that was <clears throat> so. Please check if you have received those files, and there are two files. One is step by step for all the hyperv solutions. Second is the workaround. Did you receive any file? Yes. And are you able to download that file? I sent it on the group. Has everyone received those file and download? All right, uh, uh, so I'm gonna just open the first file which says what? Yeah, so it's this file how to install Hyper-V inside VMware Workstation and and if it opens today, okay, cool. So this is the error that's coming to us and after that we need to shut down the machines. I'm gonna shut down two machines uh the domain controller and the uh member server so shut power uh, right click power and shut down guest then right click power shut down guest and then we are following the workaround so this is the document and it says you need to go to the path of that folder uh, where the virtual machine files are located for this particular virtual machine. So in our case, both virtual machine machines should be edited. <laughs> so, uh, and then we need to check for the configuration file or the .vmx file. So I'm going to start searching for the first one and the easy way to do it is this. I go to that machine and I right click the shutdown machine, the first one, and then go to settings, and then go to options, and then this is the working directory uh, where the path of that machine is uh, mentioned. So I'll just select all that path here, right click, copy. So it's in the options, and then uh, it's in the working directory. Copy that and go to run and paste that path there and press OK. Now we're inside that folder where all the files for that particular machine is and there you go the .vmx file is there. Did everyone do that? Not yet? Yes? So I can go back again to show that uh, if you have a shutdown machine, then we right click that shutdown machine, then we go to settings. Once we go to settings, uh, then we go to options. Yep, that's the VMX is the configuration file. Uh, so this working directory also takes us there, but at the bottom of the page, where this one? Oh yeah, this one, this one. But you cannot select that, right? Even if you cancel out, I cannot select it. So that's why. So right click, settings, uh, and then the options, and then this working directory, select the whole thing and copy 
and then go to run this is the run of your laptop right and then control V paste it and press OK you can use server 2 and 3 as well if you don't want to use the main controller if you so these today's lab does not involve authentication so we don't need domain controller to authenticate anything it's just a machine yeah you can go for two member servers if not domain controller so it's not necessary so this is the file dot vmx and if you go for the explanation virtual vmware virtual machine configuration dot vmx or VMware virtual machine conversion right click that file and you have to open that file in notepad so r open with if I right click and go to open with uh, it's notepad here so every two there right click and notepad if you don't see notepad then go for choose default program and then go inside and look for notepad it's in system 32 oh yes I'm recording <laughs> why you're like watching and enjoying the show huh right we're doing all the effort you have to do the effort with us okay open with notepad and once you open the notepad you see all this code here you need to go way down to the bottom and what you need to do when you once you are down at the bottom of that notepad you have to copy this code here and the code is uh, these this is the code that you need to copy and uh, okay so right click this code copy it's in the document that I sent you already and uh, all you need to do is right click and copy this and go back to the notepad you have to make sure in the notepad it should be at the bottom of the notepad so it's yeah it should be at the bottom of the notepad <laughs> I was like saying so slow already like but uh, okay so <laughs> yeah which step can you repeat the whole thing, right? You open the file, right? Oh, yeah. So, did you open the file, Notepad? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, then, do you have the document in front of you, yeah. which I sent you in the email? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you go some extent. Some extent. to some extent, or maybe, yeah. maybe yes, maybe not. Okay. So, if the code is there, there's just three line code. You have to select the whole code, copy that, and go to the Notepad and at the bottom of the notepad control V paste the note uh, this code make sure it is pasted at the bottom not between any of these lines right so it has to be on the bottom at the bottom okay once this is done what you need to do is no you have to you know click close or go for save it's going to ask for save yes you have to save it Excuse me. yep not necessary so I'm gonna do the same thing for the second machine now so you can see that again sorry yeah save do not do save as go for save because it's already in the right location oh uh, sorry yeah so zero two oh, okay yeah so it's uh, all of these three lines up uh, okay <coughs> okay <coughs> yeah second server exacto same old step -o. okay right click and oh uh, why am I copying yeah so I'm just gonna go for the second server and it's uh, so I'm gonna cancel out and go to the second server right click settings options and the same path area working directory of course it's gonna be the different path uh, it's a second machine cancel so copy and go to run control V paste press ok now there you go the VMX is there for the second machine as well in front of us so we need two working Hyper-V servers.
<laughs> it's okay. Yeah. So to make a donor child, it's okay. Oh, you're still using those. You know, you're not using the test machines, right? <coughs> you shocked me. Yeah. So we will have one. Yeah, it's okay. It could be any two machines. So the Mingador is also okay. Yeah. No. no. Yeah, so the Mingador is member server. Yeah. So we need two working Hyper-V servers. If you don't do it on the second one, we cannot install the Hyper-V on the second one. Hi second one will give the error if you don't do the same thing on the second one, right? So we need two servers. Yeah, so for today's lab, we need two Hyper-V working machines. Today's lab, yep. The other server, uh, I mean, uh, I have another one member server, or should be the Vidika or something? No, it doesn't matter. Member server, child domain, okay. domain, domain, no, doesn't matter. Okay, so VMX is there. Right click, open with, notepad. This is the second server. I'm going to paste the code again at the bottom and going back to the document all three lines of the code copy minimize go to the bottom of that notepad paste and uh, close when it says save yeah click save and that's it and now we are not ready yet okay so no every machine has to have that so you need to really search, look, look, search, search, look. Guys, once this code is done, do not start your machine right away. According to the document, you still have to go down after you paste the code and stop that or close that notepad. You have to still go to the edit virtual machine settings and go to the CPU. And you need to enable, go to the processors and enable these two options. It's in the document for everyone. Do not forget to check mark these two processor options. <clears throat> so I'm going to do it for both machines now. I'm going to go for the first machine and I'm going to right click settings and I'm going to not go anywhere. And these are the two options here. Okay. Sorry. That is exactly it. But it the, the last one, it's, uh, it was configuration, right? As long as it's VMX? Okay. Okay. There, no description was yeah description are different it's okay okay so first machine the processor virtualize Intel VT option and virtualize CPU performance both options are enabled for the first machine please do that and then start and uh, for the second machine I'm going to go to settings again and go to processor and virtualize and ET both those options are mentioned and shown in the document as well but as okay and then we start the both the machine so power on this virtual machine and then power on the second virtual machine. Make sure the three line code is in the notepad in the VMX file in the bottom. Save and then make sure that the processor on both virtual machines while shut down, uh, the two options are selected for that processor. Third one, third option is, should not be selected. So as per the document, it's showing here, the last two are selected only, and the top one is not selected. So do not make any further, any other change other than just checking mar check marking or selecting these two L documente. On both machines. Otherwise, whichever machine you miss this option, the Hyper-V will not work. You have to shut down again and you do that again. Yep, it's for the processor. It's for the professor. So. <laughs> All right, if we have done it, then uh, the Hyper-V should be working fine. It should not give that error uh, at all. So make sure that your two options are correctly set. Some of you may do that mistake of uh, notepad, uh, pasting that document uh, in a wrong way maybe in between some two lines or three lines it should be at the bottom and that is mucho mucho importante so I have started my both machines now and I hope it is working second machine is up and running so I'm just gonna go and log in oh it's a uh, child domain hey why am I not using the test machine because I did not give the test okay anyway so oh, <coughs> uh, 
Yeah. I did I take a snapshot of those machines? Snapshot 18 store. Oh, I have a snapshot. Oh, I have the second snapshot as well. Oh, I should not I should have done that. <coughs> it's mucho mucho heavy right now. So No, if you create a new snapshot, it's going to take a lot of space. So it Yeah, it will be then the same space. Yeah, exactly. So okay, so my second server is up. I just want to check if that error is still coming or not. So I'm going to go for add roles and features and next, next, next. And Hyper-V if I click add features the error was coming before now does it come or not if I click add features yay error is not coming so my second server configuration was el perfecto and I'll just go for next and that's it next 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 finito oh no no it's not it next next finito I'm just used to saying that <laughs> okay there's a network card so I'm just going to stop this configuration here and I'm gonna check on this first server uh, if it has started thinking of coming to any two servers two member servers or one DC or one member server yeah so it's any server it doesn't matter if it's a domain controller or not in fact I could just bring back the snapshot and it would not take forever now oh it's gonna take forever even for next thing so guys I'm just going uh, my I'm just uh, you know finishing my domain controller by going to the snapshot and it's gonna back go back to that AD install and activate it where it was just that so click go to then I have to make those changes again and snapshot is going back now where it was just active directory DNS and it was activated so now I do not have all those roles which I installed uh, the till now it's a fresh machine and see I didn't take any time so now I'm gonna at least yeah still have to do those workaround steps so I'm gonna power it down and it should be faster than before so anyone reached this long time ago wow anyone else reached here yes no okay no yes or yes no uh, yes yes no or no no yes because um, it has so many roles already installed from the previous last week, last week. oh that uh, before that it was a so you're testing yeah. a new machine now right no, no, so you uh, server one? Uh, on server 1 it's also taking time yeah, yeah should not domain is taking time but server, not, server 1 should not be taking time you so yeah. let me yeah well once it's gonna take time because we have put a foreign code here and it's kind of in a shock no, I'm just kidding uh, it could be anything actually so yeah let's let's blame it on the code and wait so I'm going to the options general and then for the first machine since I took a snapshot of that and went back actually not took it just went back to the snapshot so I need to do this uh, for the first machine again so taking the path going to the VMX opening it in notepad and going way down to the bottom and uh, da, 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 da. okay then the three the codes the three line code has to be copied and uh, this is that uh, three line code and uh, then we go for uh, uh, okay the code is copied and save and then the L processor oh, that is the two options on the processor and oh okay yeah yes sir where then you need you need to reach here so keep yeah exactly so when we all reach here let me know so we can wait till 630 no problem no it's I'm just gonna keep going uh, 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 Huh? Sorry? Yeah, with or without DC, doesn't matter. So is has everyone done this? 
the workaround or the around work okay so on the Ethernet page I'm gonna go ahead now yeah yeah then again same error if it's the same error then you have to shut down again and do the same code again this machine for you is the child domain you're looking in at what yeah as a child domain administrator admin one yeah admin one child child domain administrator yeah admin one is in domain the main domain not the child domain uh no no actually i logged in as administrator sorry so administrator in child domain yeah okay so whoever is on this page please select this ethernet card because this is the network card that uh, this Hyper-V will be using and then we're going to be creating th three switches there but that let, let that come and then we're going to talk about that for now I'm selecting this ethernet zero and going next so if you reach that page it's ethernet zero going next I'm checking the first machine which is also up now um, uh, uh, kinda no I did not select anything else other than hyper-v that's all and <coughs> add features other than that nothing nothing extra oh was it administrator or was it admin 1 oh it was admin 1 seriously Huh? Uh, I'm sure I did not forget the password and I have to redo the whole thing again for you know. Oh, okay, good. Which is okay, select the top one. Yeah. Sorry? Two network card? No, just one. If you see that, it's okay. Just go ahead with the select the top one. Four. No, so that's my local PC problem. Yeah. So nobody has to change the password. Please do not do that. And uh, so uh, now, okay, on the second machine, everyone on this page virtual machine migration so if we are supposed to do the migration we need to select this option there's an option for cred SSP and this Kerberos option if you have uh, to migrate uh, this uh, this protocol is less secure than Kerberos but does not require you to set up a constrained delegation to perform a live migration you must be logged on to the source server so uh, we can select this if we are not using the Kerberos authentication this CRUD SSP is actually between two servers without a central authentication mechanism involved at all. So uh, we can select, keep selected this, uh, and let's do, let's click this. Allow this server to send and receive live migrations of virtual machines because at the end of the lab we are trying to do the 412 portion of this Hyper-V. Uh, uh, but uh, we're just in the way selecting this option and. Uh, so you, all you need to do is check this mark why because we need to also in the end migrate live migrate one virtual machine to another yeah you were saying if anyone who has two just select the top one we should do it on both machines exactly Okay, where's oh, yeah, exact same on the second machine. Yeah, uh, we can edit it anytime. Yeah, so we need to go to the role services and edit that role services. So start that role, and then why did you finish it? Next, I finish password. Uh, synchronization oh that uh, this one okay guys so the lesson is <laughs> stay with me
until I reach and when I go next then only go next oh. God. oh okay that's a good point yeah but still stay with M E me all right so please select this option no you can do it later as well anytime so yeah oh so I have to say that again stay with M E me okay so uh, check mark this option next and then this is the path where it's going to be installed so next and if it needs to restart yes go ahead and restart press yes if not it's not gonna restart click install I'm going to go to the first server and we'll do the same thing add rules and features next 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 roll hyper V add features please don't give error oh thank god okay next and L next though and uh, for one Ethernet card or two doesn't matter go for the top one if you have two next and allow this server to send and receive live migrations of virtual machines use credential uh, security support provider this is like without having a central authentication no Kerberos uh, these two machines will just talk to each other next next restart press yes click install so everyone on this, these two steps done for two machines for everyone, every two, every three? Yes. All right. Huh? Okay. Oh, mine is also restarting. All right. Thank you. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was a gift. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. What What happened? Uh, the, re the request or to add remote features on the specified server failed installation of one or more roles, role services, or features failed error. Uh, Alright, I think it's taking time for uh, I think it's restarting for everyone. Oh, same thing that happened there. Either try to reinstall, otherwise, do you have a, another server? <coughs> because I think this is that old server where already so many roles are installed, so something got conflicted. So, this is a new one. Uh, did you take a snapshot when it was okay, good, actually bad, but not good? Uh, do you have a third server? By any chance? Okay, good. Shut down this one and good luck with the second one. So, third one. So, once, okay, both of my servers are restarting now. And let me just go with that. Oh, okay, cool. So, this is the second, it is a PDF I sent to everyone. And this is like a, a PDF of one of those days when I was trying to organize my documents by doing step by step and uh, then I got bored to death from that and it was so much task to do oh I'm so brutally honest uh, huh? hey that's good idea so guys can you make the document like this for all the previous labs okay this is if if you do that it's a serious five marks addition if they are stepped like this uh, no, you took one mark from me. That's not fair. One mark? No, that was not for from only you. That was from others as well. Why? There was a there was a top secret reason for that. Why? Let me come up with that in five minutes. So, so <laughs> no, he d Albers didn't get it. Uh, he, he got so it's the time. The more you're away from the perfect time or the more you're away from the first guy who finished it and then there were some you know there were some overall things that were not kind of perfect and that were kind of a little imperfect so yeah that is the reason yeah so <laughs> hey you want who wants full marks come on I'm recording all that sorry so if you get this if you get all the previous steps like this it's a uh, 
It, it cannot be 10 marks, sorry. So five marks, yeah, for that. <laughs> cool. So video? Uh, well, this is step by step with pages on all. So this is the proper document. Y it's going to be very, very useful for you. But the main thing is you'll get practice on how to create a step by step and see the hard work here. I mean, like if you keep going, it's like objectives, work around, then all the screenshots are there and it's a proper document. I mean, uh, since I made it, so I'm praising it a lot. So it's a very professional document by someone genius who must have prepared that. And I met that genius. Uh, oh, anyway, huh? so uh, yeah, yeah, that document. And then the whole next steps, all next steps, what we are about to do. Okay, the live migration is not there, so I'm gonna have to add that. But anyway, if you do all those, uh, whoever does that, you know, it's your own benefit for all the previous labs as well, proper documents with page numbers and everything. And uh, then um, submit that and a total five marks added. If you are just missing five marks, you will get full marks. So, okay. So anyway, uh, let's go ahead with this. Uh, now, all, both the servers are ready. Okay, restart in my case. So, the root DC it remains a root DC yeah. hypervisor has nothing to do with removing the domain controller active factory no 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 so there are two types of hypervisor that's what I'm going to explain now that uh, type 1 and type 2 okay so everyone has restarted as well So if everyone has restarted, your Hyper-V uh, configuration should be ending like this. <coughs> okay, everyone has this Hyper-V ending like this? Yes, thank you for that reply. And uh, let's close this. And now let's launch. Everyone is seeing on the left side Hyper-V, right? Right or left? Left side, right? Right? Or left okay anyway so so you can go and open hyper-v console from tools here or you can go and click left and then go to the right side and right click and go for hyper-v manager here it's both the same thing and then so I'm just going to open it on any one of the servers uh, and then we're gonna start playing with that yay so server 2 is here in, in your case, if it's over one, it's okay. In my case, over two, it doesn't matter. Uh, the steps are same. Uh, so there are many options here on the right side and the left side, there's a machine. Uh, first of all, I wanted to um, open this for the L Slido and uh, so the slide says, um, uh, there's a document blah 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 whatever okay benefits um, so less uh, or centralized management uh, you have if you have so many hosts hyper-v hosts you can have centralized management of those all hosts um, so if I go to my uh, professional drawing tool called MS paint uh, which is not professional but anyway <coughs> so there if uh, this is the first hypervisor and this is the second hypervisor uh, so either there is a type of hypervisor that has hardware so I'm just gonna type here um, hardware and then it has OS and then it has uh, Hyper V role, and then it has um, all those virtual machines on that Hyper V role. So, this is 
what type of uh, hyper-V there is this type of hyper-V and then there is another type here uh, hardware and then hypervisor and then the virtual machine this is a dedicated one uh, and it doesn't matter it's okay so what difference do you see here and the so what is here is uh, an operating system is in between hardware and hyper-v role which means that it's not dedicatedly uh, you know uh, given the role of hyper-v maybe you can install here DNS DHCP any other role plus hyper-v role right but here when you install hypervisor uh, this will be uh, the dedicated virtualization uh, server and it will uh, have all the virtual machines uh, uh, you know uh, so this is type 1 and this is type 2 or the other way around as Sumit said so type 1 hyper y is there let's see if Sumit was uh, correct or not okay oh I just wanted to sh uh, show you the diagram. In the reason that it, 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 it simply put, distinction between type 1 and type 2 is what? Has to do with whether an underlying operating system is present or not. So, which one is the type 1? Uh, uh, there is no formal standards based of type 1 and type 2 criteria, however. Okay, he's just talking about that. The type 1 hypervisor as running uh, directly on the hardware, and type 2 hypervisor runs on a host operating system so now which one is the type 1 which one type 2 so hypervisor is type 2 and and God. type 1 why? No. This is two and this is one. No. Okay, everyone is playing the same game now. Okay. So <laughs> we have Sumit. So now Oh seriously, I cannot remove that. Hey, wow, this is good, man. So, the main difference between the two is? One more thing about Hyper-V, hyper This is in VMware. In VMware, are we doing the same thing? Yeah. So, VMware ESXi, you are in the VMware class, you're using the hypervisor, yeah. right? Type 1. And what we are doing here in VMware Workstation? This is type? So there, it's it's above an OS. Yeah. So that's what we are doing. Mm -hmm. Hyper. So in VMware, you are using type one, yeah. and in this, you are using type two. <laughs> yes. Yes. Why am I smiling? Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> so this is going to be type two, and this is going to be type one. So you can see the difference here, right? Now let's go ahead and use our type 1 Hyper-V or type 2 Hyper-V? The Hyper-V we have now configured is? <laughs> See this? Type 2 Hypervisor runs on a host operating system. What are we using here? So our VMware is on is a type 2 Hypervisor. Okay, let's go ahead. Uh, first thing is this. Second thing is this is uh, the main configuration you must be familiar with this one uh, in VMware uh, that uh, when you have ESXi uh, you know hypervisor installed on a physical host it has to be connected to it should be connected to a uh, remote storage and 
the second host should be connected to the remote storage as well so you could do some vmotion migrations of all types uh, open yeah open filer we can use open filer yeah. for that uh, we, you can use windows 2012 r2 as well as a sandbox instead of using hopper uh, open filer you can use windows 2012 it has that feature now in 2008 it was not the, uh, that good so windows 2012 full core hyper-v server so uh, hyper-v requirements uh, inside the core server core you can also so guys one more question here if i add a third machine here and so this is the hypervisor the type 1 windows 2012 r2 is free you can just download free from uh, the website uh, and you can just install it on any host it's a free type 1 hypervisor and then directly install on that all the virtual machines I, remotely you have to configure that but if i add this third type here which is just with microsoft it is offered uh, there's a another machine and this time i install on this this time i install on this uh, server core so there on the hardware so again i have to just put it hardware uh, and then server core and then Hyper-V and then we go for the clients so what difference do you see between the third one and the first one this is purely hypervisor type 1 which means you install that it's a small file and uh, hypervisor it's going to install and it directly you can configure it for dedicated uh, uh, hyper-v role this is operating system windows 2012 and then hyper-v role which we just installed type 2 but this is the full GUI mode operating system and now here I installed server core what's the difference between the two and what are the pros and cons here uh, here server core and there we don't need right here so if you have data center edition uh, virtual machines are unlimited middle one uh, so when you install hypervisor data center edition when you install the windows 2012 r2 operating system and then add the role of hypervisor and then uh, you start uh, installing the virtual machines if you have installed the standard edition of windows 2012 you can just add two virtual machines that's it standard but we we are using data center edition so it's unlimited virtual machines but the license is for the operating system inside those virtual machines but the virtual machine itself as many you can create free uh, in so what but I was asking what is the difference between this server core and this OS installation so you can you, you have an operating system here in the middle you have operating system here in the middle which one is better for virtual machines server core. server core but what is the extra benefit of that so you achieve that uh, uh, you know uh, objective of low yeah. memory low processing low hard disk space by installing server core but you can still add extra roles other than the hyper-v role inside here in hypervisor this is only hypervisor no other DNS or DHCP could not be installed any of the role is not installed but server core you install by so the benefit is you don't take any memory or processing but also you have the benefit of you may add extra roles to that that's the only difference between uh, the GUI mode where it is taking lots of memory and RAM memory and uh, processor and here it's not taking that plus it's doing the same thing that GUI is offering to make it a multi-purpose machine Anyway, uh, these are the three types. Yeah. Uh, so when we install hyper, it is hypervisor. If you put it over the operating system, it is a hypervisor. If you put without an operating system, direct hypervisor. No, from I the right now, we install hyper and after we start it, the OS becomes a hypervisor. So. so now we are in, I mean, yes, yeah. we have both VMware. 
so in our case type you're talking about type 2 it will become the server code now the books is that okay so books likes to call it that way but we are what we have done we still have the OS in the middle this means it's a type 2 hypervisor which means that it's going to take its extra memory which we don't which we really need for virtual machines inside it's a hypervisor it's still a hypervisor definitely you're right so we can call it a hypervisor but type 2 hypervisor right no that was just an example <laughs> <coughs> so there are two features that uh, 2012 is supporting one is x64 with SL80 or slat second level address translation giving us more direct connection between VMs and CPU so uh, with slat you can have virtual machines can use hardware directly or more direct connection is there and the second feature is DEP or DEP data execution processing prevents execution of malicious apps to the, to use the processor so these two features in 2012 they introduced uh, just for security and performance um, processing of up to 32 CPU for guest uh, guest machines so if you a add a virtual machine you can't believe it cool there's a mouse uh, anyway so yeah uh, it's okay it's okay keep calm and <laughs> It's just Mickey Mouse. Oh, it's gone. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so, processing of up to 32 CPUs can be given to a virtual machine. Memory of up to 1 terabyte can be given to a guest virtual machine. And storage is uh, input output is critical. Uh, consider VMs on different disks plus SAN, RAID, SSD, and hybrid SSD. So, uh, we can have the storage just like I showed that uh, middle storage area where you, all the hard disks are or LUNs are multiple NICs as throughput coming from lots of VMs so it's recommended to have two NICs uh, we are going for one NIC for now uh, it's a lab environment but it's always recommended to have two NICs uh, to use this Hyper-V client configuration dynamic memory start with 512 megabyte expand as needed as well as reduce so do you have dynamic memory supported there in VMware like uh, did you not dynamic memory is there any feature where oh. you give a memory and the machine needs more memory and automatically it is provided that memory whatever is needed and then when the machine does not need that memory then it is taken back as well from the machine in VMware ESXi uh, I think you're gonna go there uh, to that memory section it's called also uh, ballooning uh, which is and did you uh, start DRS Distributed yes. resource yes. scheduler. No, 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 no. Okay, so yeah, you will reach there, then you will know about the memory. Okay, so smart paging. <laughs> Maybe he taught you and you missed it. Huh? God, DRS is just uh, resource scheduling. So you schedule the resource, meaning uh, there are five virtual machines and you can make available CPUs or memories to that whichever machine is really needing more hardware resource so ASXI automatically give that resource to that machine so uh, you can also prioritize the machine uh, that oh this yeah in V center you can you can do that prioritization as well this machine needs more resource so always give it that much and uh, you know if it requires but it takes that too so it's automatic hardware availability hardware resource availability <coughs> for virtual machines that's DRS so okay it's a uh, smart paging helps in better startup time for VMs this is also supported in 2012 uh, that better startup time for the virtual machine resource metering keeps track of usage of memory CPU network of VMs so there's a resource metering that starts with a command partial command and then it starts uh, seeing which virtual machine is using how much hardware of the host so guest integration in the guest machines which we are going to create now shut down the VM sync the time with host exchange data blah 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 uh, VHD 2 terabyte maximum capacity so hard disk could be as big as 2 terabyte in 2012 uh, so 64 terabyte maximum uh, it can go for VHDX so do you know what is the difference between VHD and VHDX 
the difference of x, right? No. So, yeah, Hyper V of 2008 had VHD, which had the maximum of 2 terabyte, and Hyper V of 2012 is VHDX, the new hard disk. It supports a lot of new features, and uh, 64 terabyte is the maximum it can go, right? Yep. VHD is a virtual hard disk. So it's a file in which, you know, it uh, it uh, acts as a hard disk for our operating system on which we install. So VHD is the hard disk file. And 10 years ago there was a cassette. <coughs> VHD recorder, that was like VCR recorder, yeah. Oh, VHD, okay, well, VHS. <laughs> That's like the servers you were talking down. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. This should be five marks more down, but anyway, it, it's okay. This is a smaller mistake. Server down was a big mistake. <laughs> yeah, there should be ten bits actually. We should. It should be a tasty punishment. So. Okay, it's more resilient if the machine fails or shuts down, the data is, uh, there are better chances of data recoverability. Modify VHD, you can modify the VHD roles and features. Suppose you have installed the DNS role, and so you shut down the VHD or the computer. You can then uh, also add or remove any role. You want to add the DHCP role or DNS role or remove it. You can do it even when the VHD is offline or the computer is shut down. So these are some of the new features that we should keep in mind. Edit virtual disk. Wizard. We can convert VHD to VHDX. So VHD is Windows. So this is the hard disk of the Hyper-V of which operating system? VHD. It's the hardest of the Windows XP operating system. And And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, what I was saying is okay. <laughs> so let me just uh, write it down. Maybe that will be much easier to remember. So VHD uh, is a hard disk of Windows 2008 server Hyper V. And VHDX is the HDD of Windows uh, Server 2012 uh, Hyper V. So VHD sub can go for 2 terabyte, and VHDX can go up to 64 terabyte maximum hard disk space. You can give it and then there are many 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 other features that it support that we're gonna uh, talk about so yeah we can edit virtual disk uh, convert VHD to VHDX the older to newer one shrink the disk uh, expand the disk there is a uh, differencing drives option that we can select it's coming on the next slide we're gonna uh, talk about that pass through disk is also another feature that is supported what is a pass through disk feature? If I, uh, oh, hey, okay. I'll just open another MS Paint instead of creating. Okay, so pass through disk is if you have this operating system here and you are uh, creating, uh, a, you already have a disk or a VHD here um, and this is the VHD. X because we're talking about Windows 2012 so it's a VHDX uh, then you you have installed all the programs here yeah, the Windows uh, operating system is here Windows uh, MS Office is installed on this disk suppose this is the initial installation then you install a second disk and this is also installed in the same uh, uh, machine but this will be known as the differencing disk and what does it do uh, 
uh, whatever newer software gets installed on this server will be um, will be what whatever newer server newer applications gets installed will only be installed on the differencing disk or the new disk that has been added as a differencing disk which means the main purpose is to to save disk space in the first disk uh, oops everything gets installed on the second disk uh, automatically so differencing disk has the only purpose of saving the space of the first disk and whatever gets installed only gets installed in the second disk with this is called differencing disk and then there is another disk option the pass through disk which is mucho mucho importante and that is if you have an operating system here and uh, what you do is that you install an hypervisor here so this is hardware and then there is direct hypervisor no operating system right so this is the type yeah type 1 hypervisor now uh, you have here um, CPU uh, sorry you have here uh, a hard disk so there's a VHDX uh, no 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 that's a you have a physical disk installed maybe you have uh, uh, four terabyte of uh, local disk installed here and now you create virtual machines so what happens is that you see that oh there are there is a virtual machine um, that is there's a virtual machine that is going to install um, SQL Server which is a very uh, IOPS intensive application so when I say IOPS anyone knows what does that mean SQL Server uh, IOPS input output per second so the disks are read they read the disk and write the disk read the disk and write the disk so the disks are busy and input out input is coming output is going uh, so the disks should be if they're SSD it will be uh, it will support much higher IOPS if it is normal HDD it's going to support less IOPS which means the application on this when uh, well you're starting the application it's going to take more time to start or uh, and uh, if you have any application on SSD it's going to take uh, less time to start and work so more IOPS are required so you have a virtual machine on which SQL server is there and it really needs a lot of disk space no not a disk space it really needs a performance on the hard disk very good performance so in pass through disk what happens this is we are talking about pass through disk what happens here is that you do not use the virtual disk right so do not use virtual disk so what do you use so virtual disk uh, you know, the VHDX could be you know uh, it it could be on this server uh, this storage area which is remotely available here right so the the SQL server application would be installed on a virtual disk which is actually present here not locally so this means over the network the data is passing over SAN uh, fiber optic SAN or Ethernet SAN uh, so if over the network if the data is passing the speed is the speed is very very fast okay the, so if the hardest speed <laughs> so if the VHDX on which the SQL server is installed it's actually present here it's not locally present on this server right so this means this uh, SQL server application is performing slow because it's not using the local hard disk and when you virtualize something normally this is this is the case uh, your virtual disks are always on a remote storage and uh, this is called the SAN storage oh why am I writing like this hey it's fun cool I'm getting good at that okay anyway so SAN either you can have fiber optic if you have fiber optic which is very expensive then 
uh, the IOPS will be faster. The disk read and write speed will be faster even over the network. But if it is not fiber optic, if it is Ethernet or uh, iSCSI, then it will be slow speed. Now the SQL Server, the main thing about it is that you want fast SQL Server running on this machine. So what you do is uh, you install this application directly on the physical disk of this host. Just this one virtual machine. Maybe there are 10 virtual machines there, but this one virtual machine has an application, SQL Server, which is taking so much IOPS, which requires so much disk read and write speed. So then you can actually give this application an access directly on the physical disk while other virtual machines are still uh, having their hard disk uh, placed on a remote storage called SAN, right? So pass through disk means you give virtual machine direct access to the physical disk of the host. The host always has its own redundancy as well. If the disk physical disk fails, there it's in RAID actually, RAID one mirror. There's a mirror going on for both disks. Yep. So it will all reside on the disk on this disk. Yeah, you you give it, uh, you know, install it on the physical disk. You give create a f one terabyte volume there, and then you install the application and database as well. If you want the speed to be very very good, so this is just an option that you can use if you want to use. Yeah. So uh, in our case, in our company, SQL Server is on a separate physical you know servers we don't put it on virtual machines but in case you do put that and the, it's a company policy that virtualize everything that comes your way virtualize this chair table everything uh, other than the applications so <laughs> so don't virtualize me yeah so yeah so if you want to do that and your application is taking really long you know lots of uh, uh, read and write speed then you can give local physical disk for that application, this is just a feature that you can use. It's not they're running, I think they're running in the uh, server type one, right? Yeah, yeah, this is type one. Bare, bare metal. Yeah, this is a bare metal where it's just a hypervisor. And we can still do it with the type two as well. But it's with Hyper V. No, it's in RAID. So RAID one. Anyone knows what is RAID RAID one? You know what's a disk mirroring? So there are two disks and if same size, one terabyte, one terabyte, but the total size used is the half of the total. So like one terabyte will be used uh, instead of two terabyte, one terabyte or two disks. And there's a mirror or copy of anything that is going on in the first disk is uh, there's a mirror being created on the second disk, right? So normally these are in RAID already. In hardware rate there, so pass through disk. Yeah. 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 If it is fiber channel, it's all already good. If it's not, or even if fiber channel somehow is not good enough for them, so then you go for local. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the thing is, if you have one terabyte, one terabyte. What is the total capacity that you can use? <coughs> yeah. yeah, in the background it's copying in both of course. So, so on the storage topic we're going to be talking about RAID. There are no strips. RAID, this is RAID 1, right? Yeah, this is mirror. Okay, guys, I cannot hear him. Yeah, sorry, thank you. Hyper-V and VMware, okay, yeah. Yeah, why isn't it installing on a remote storage? 
So this is just an extra feature that we can use. It's not compulsory. You don't use it. Go ahead with the fiber optic and uh, 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 fiber channel and install and use this remote storage. You don't have to use the local storage. It's just a feature that in case you want to use. Let's say the ideology of the digitalization. Yep. It has to be s remote. So, yeah, this is a risk you're taking now. This is a risk that if the server goes down and the local hard disk, especially the RAID crashes somehow, uh, if both disks of the RAID 1 are, uh, you know, it crash, or RAID 5, you know, if uh, you have RAID 5, you can lose still one disk. If you lose two disks, you lose everything. So you're still taking a risk, but it's just that it's, if you need performance, this is just a feature that is supported or being offered. You don't have to use it if you don't want. It's just a feature. But uh, in many cases, uh, in some cases, people do use that temporarily to just give performance for certain un until it gets upgraded to some better high-end server. And uh, your uh, your SAN is also upgraded to some high-end, better uh, LANs with. So temporarily, you can use that. Don't have what? Uh, yeah, we can use uh, iSCSI here. We, iSCSI Ethernet SAN we can use, and this is a lab coming. Uh, the last lab will be our SAN box. We're gonna be configuring the failover clustering. So we'll use four machines then, and then we're, you're gonna see all this, the virtual disk and everything. That will be the coolest lab. Okay, so differencing disk, we know now that we need to uh, save the space of the parent disk. So we can use the differencing disk, anything will be saved there. And second is pass through disk, you can use a local disk from the host itself. All right, uh, uh, we can go for uh, differencing disk and there is a MAC address as well. Okay, we'll go come, we'll come back here. Let's go for the lab and try to configure it uh, a little more yeah so uh, I'm on server 2 right now you could be on server 1 or 2 it doesn't matter uh, let's create a new virtual machine if it does not lock me out uh, so I'm just gonna come back here and then I'm going to open it forever so uh, I'm just gonna go to the control panel go to the system and security go to the power options and change plan settings and go to never ever ever close <coughs> again okay so right click the server to go to new and click virtual machine every two there yeah. okay so virtual machine and then we go next and we put the name of the first virtual machine as client 01 uh, we keep the path as the same this is on the second it could be on the first, doesn't matter. Yep. Anyone? Sorry? Uh, client 01. Client 01 on the first server. Uh, and then go next. Every two. There's a generation 1 and generation 2. So just like. Sorry? Yeah, near virtual machine. So generation, just like we had a VHD of 2008 and VHDX of 2012 that was just a hard disk this is the virtual machine generation 1 is from 2008 Hyper-V uh, generation 1 virtual machine and generation 2 is the 2012 Hyper-V virtual machine yeah the problem uh, no just client 01 leave the defaults and go ahead next welcome Okay, just like I gave this uh, difference of uh, hey, why can't this go down? Uh, okay, anyway, uh, just like uh, there was VHD and VHDX, there's a generation one uh, uh, VM or virtual machine uh, for uh, Windows 2008. Hyper V uh, generation 2 VM for Windows 2012 Hyper V. 
Uh, are you even able to see that? Okay. Hey, why does it? Oh, it does go down. Okay. Anyway, <clears throat> I'll stop complaining. Uh, so this is generation one. It's for VMware. 2008 Hyper-V, so this is just for backward compatibility that it's still offering. Hey, do you want to create a generation one virtual machine? So it's going to be, so you can just transfer that virtual machine to uh, Windows 2008 Hyper-V as well. If you want generation two, it will be just run on uh, Windows 2012 Hyper-V, right? So we're gonna just click generation two uh, virtual machine and then, yeah, it's client zero one. Client zero one, and after that it's generation two. And, uh, well. no. Okay, there's that startup memory. Uh, Five twelve, uh, we are have given it. So it then we can click this use dynamic memory for this virtual machine. Uh, when you decide how much memory to assign to a virtual machine, consider how you intend to use a virtual machine and the operating system that it will run. So what does it say? Specify the amount of memory to allocate to this virtual machine. You can specify an amount from 32 MB through 2642. Everyone is seeing 2642? Oh, 2642 you're seeing? You're seeing 255? That's it? 2558 so two so it's a different memory why is it showing different for everyone it's on the what you get on your laptop or what you get on your what you put it on your host so total of uh, total memory I've given to my host is I think 2 GB 4 GB okay yeah so it's uh, uh, no yeah, like uh, we can give more and yeah you could give me more you need more you, you want to give me some uh, okay so yes uh, if you put it four it's okay if it's on two it's gonna be a little slow but doesn't matter that much so it's okay uh, so you it can go up to uh, you know it can go up to two six whatever why is it different it's a uh, according to your uh, hardware that you give uh, so let's put it on dynamic if this virtual machine needs more it's going to be provided more memory and the mouse is back cool oh, it's gone okay so next so here configure networking everyone on this page so if we keep it selected as not connected what will happen there will be no network card um, okay let's give it a network card and click next so now it says connect virtual disk uh, create a virtual disk use an existing virtual disk attach a virtual disk later so we're gonna just create a new virtual disk here with uh, the hardest space as 127 GB maximum is 64 terabyte so let's just select the default the VHDX name or the hardest name is also same as a machine name but the path is always different. Machine is saved somewhere else. Hard disk is saved somewhere else. The path is always different. I, in VMware Workstation, we have hard disk and machine files are in the same folder. Here it's different because it's Microsoft. So next, um, install an operating system later or install from ISO. So if you select install from ISO, where do you get that? you must yeah so so uh, everyone has Windows 7 or 8 8.1 no 8 .1. come on just 8 oh, okay of course April <laughs> okay. so uh, even if you have 2012 don't use that okay <laughs> because it's already inside VMware inside uh, Hyper-V inside uh, inside inside so it's gonna be like uh, too much for the whole operating system so I'm just going for settings and uh, I'm going to uh, go to the DVD and going to browse and selecting seven or eight doesn't matter 
All right. Is it released? Seventeen. Oh, seventeen. Cool. Yeah. Um, so I selected the ISO. Oh yeah, uh, for the desk, yeah, uh, uh, not later, the default one. Install today. No. Yeah, ISO. So ISO, if I if I mount it to my <laughs> VMware, is it gonna work? So if I suppose mount it now, I pressed OK, I mounted Windows 7, right? So if I go to the virtual machine for install ISO, click browse, this browse is going to the Hyper-V CD-ROM, right? Yes. And the ISO is mounted to the Hyper-V. It should be mounted actually to the virtual machine. The ISO file should be copied inside the Hyper-V C drive then it should be mounted to the virtual machine now if i go to the dvd rom of the hyper v i can actually see the the setup file it's not iso image right we are inside the iso image so we need to mount iso image to to the virtual machine and if how do we give iso to the virtual machine you need to copy the iso from your laptop inside your Windows 2012 which has Hyper-V installed so what am I doing here now if I cancel out so hard, uh, so when we click browse we can go to this as well if you have the shared folder that's the second step you can go to the shared folder Oh, okay. Oh, okay. You attach the hard drive and then you do that. Okay, that's also a way. Uh, guys, um, Windows 8 for now. Um, okay, we need to have at least one. So let's do the this. What I'm doing is now I'm going to my laptop. I'm going to that uh, folder where I have Central Soft or uh, where I have Windows 7 just to show in the video uh, I'm copying the whole ISO inside my second or wherever I'm running that if you're running on the first server it doesn't matter wherever you're running this image uh, wizard just go in the that server go to the C drive of that server and paste that ISO inside the Windows 2012 where you install the Hyper-V why why are we doing that Uh oh, did you install uh, VMware tools? Okay, so then you can go for the second thing, uh, shared folder. Do you enable the shared folder? Yeah, because you said Linux is the future, that's why. You know. Windows is getting back at you. <laughs> If you have ISO Windows 7 or 8, copy it inside the C drive of Windows 2012 from your laptop. So we're going to our uh, on our laptop. Yeah. Copy. So you need to copy inside the Windows 2012 where you just installed Hyper-V. In the C drive of the virtual machine where you just installed Hyper-V, right? Everyone has copied that? My machine is too fast right now, so it's uh, too fast and furious. And if I am in the same screen, now I have ISO file inside the C drive of the Windows 2012 where I am running this Hyper-V wizard. Since it is copying, can we have a break? What? Majority is authority, man. <laughs> hey, we don't need a break. Come on, you have an opponent now. You have to convince Sumit now. <laughs> Samosa? Oh. Hey, it's. I think it's. Yeah, it's closed, right? Uh, Tim, 
<laughs> anyway, like we cannot. <laughs> so, if I click browse, uh, I have that image in C drive right now, Windows 7. And there's the image, ISO image that I'm mounting to this virtual machine. This is the same thing we did when we were installing VMware Workstation. Uh, for virtual machine in VMware Workstation, what we do? When we go with the wizard, we just give the path of the ISO. So this is a virtual machine inside VMware Workstation, inside Hyper-V. So we have to copy the Windows 7 ISO inside the Windows 2012 C drive so the virtual machine inside Hyper-V can get that ISO directly. Right? So this is for the this is for the uh, you know video so I'm just gonna go next and finito. As soon as you give the ISO path, next, there's nothing else. So click finito and uh, I'm gonna start so so this virtual machine is created and it says the state is off and if we right click it and we can go to start and it is saying started as a status and there's a virtual machine there's a memory down here that is showing us 512 MB assigned memory is 512 MB dynamic memory enabled so memory demand may increase and it might show that uh, networking there is one network card here replication uh, it's not configured yet so I'm just seeing the virtual machine properties here while the machine is started uh, I'm going to double click that or click connect to that machine first I click start here now I click connect here so when I click connect the virtual machine is starting and should be installing Windows 8 or 7 whatever I saw I provided inside the C drive of the Windows 2012 on which the Hyper-V is added uh, oh I have to change the boot sequence and uh, so eject insert What is that? Oh, oh, oh. VM guest ISO. So I'm just gonna add it again. Insert disk and ISO here. Windows 7 and checkpoint action settings. Okay, go to settings and there's the BIOS here I <coughs> firmware and there it is hard drive so move up the hard drive here now it should apply okay so I've just gone to the settings gone to the settings go to the firmware and the boot sequence is here boot order hard drive was down third so I put it up by moving up there uh, Iron got that Yes. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. So uh, press OK. So I went to File, Settings, and then the firmware, and then just see if the hard drive is in the third. Then move it up. I just moved it up already, so it's on the first hard drive. Does it work now? If we reset, reset. And it does not work. Cool. What? Okay. Yeah, Windows ISO is there. Or I could do one more thing. Does it? Sh okay, stop. Turn off. Let's check some more settings here. Firmware enables secure boot. Secure boot is a feature that helps prevent unauthorized code from running at boot time. It is recommended that you enable this setting. Uh, yeah. Uh, and you have DVD. Oh, sorry. You know what? 
um, you need to have DVD first uh, booted, not the hard drive. So, what was the thinking? No, okay. It was on uh, DVD? Yeah. Okay, I'll just put it at back again anyway. Just to check, does it give me an option or press any key to continue the installation of? Yep. Oh. Sorry? Yeah, WDS. Yes, you're right. Actually, WDS. Hey, cool. So whoever has WDS, because I did that genius thing of you know reverting to the snapshot, where it was just Active Directory, and there is no WDS anymore in my case. So those who have WDS still now, you can press F12 at this time, and you can actually uh, you know go for go for go for that. So if your your WDS can capture this and uh, give you and uh, start installing the basic windows. But uh, turn off checkpoint. All right. What did you do? Okay, that's that's so I'm so you know so you know what so. F12. F8. Yeah, let's press something here. F12. F2. Okay, I'm pressing all the buttons right now and uh, I'm crazily pressing every button on the planet Earth. And yeah, it again slapped me. Oh, I mean, it again welcomed me. Yeah. Checkpoint. No, don't get a checkpoint at that. Okay, one day it's gonna work. So until that day, we can uh, just. Uh, oh. There's one more thing I can do here. Settings, um, firmware, hard drive, network boot. Hmm. So I hope one day it's gonna work. Until then, we can d explore other options now. Apply, uncheck, apply. Okay. Second success story. Okay, space. Space. Yeah, that was a WDS thing we did. Okay, so. All right. Press, press yeah, press any keys coming now. Oh, actually, I, it, it's it's already. But you're supposed to see press any key to boot, guys. What I did different was settings, and I unchecked the boot secure option. Can you try that as well? So firmware and uncheck the. So you have to shut down the machine, and then uncheck the enable secure boot, and then DVD up there as well. Try this. And I think uh, that was the okay. There it is. All right. Woohoo! Combo attack. <laughs> okay. So no, but did you uncheck the enable secure option? It's still enabled. So guys, just try to press space and try to grab the screen. So keep clicking the mouse button and keep clicking the space button and try to scream as loud as possible. No, don't try that last one. Okay. So uh, just you know, try to space button and space. Yeah. Okay. Mouse button and space. Okay. It's installing now, and uh, so anyone else? Space button worked for anyone else? Oh, the oh, the guys were. It worked for me, man. Come on. Come on so fast. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so well, the main purpose was actually not to install Windows 8 here or 7, but to know if we did try to do that, how to mount the image, where to put the image to mount it while we are in this situation that we are inside the hypervisor, inside hypervisor. So, second thing is 
how to give a three types of networks to this machine. So there are three types of switches that we need to create. Um, if we go to the virtual switch manager here, I've clicked the virtual switch manager here. There are three types of switch, external, internal, and private. There are three types of uh, virtual switch. So uh, this is exactly as we, if I go to Hyper-V now and create a virtual machine, or not create a virtual machine, uh, let me just show you. This is external, internal, private, and Hyper-V. Right click in VMware settings and network card bridge NAT host so Hyper-V uh, offers external internal private and VMware offers uh, bridge NAT host so if I cancel out from here let's go for uh, external so what I want to do is yep uh, the start screen oh yeah so cancel out I'll just cancel out from here and this is the virtual switch manager so if you go to the virtual switch manager, there are three types of uh, virtual switches that you can connect to any uh, virtual machine, right? So in fact, you know what? First machine has uh, an operating system. Let's create four more machines or three more machines, which will be empty only. Client 02, Client 03, Client 04, and Client 05. <laughs> yep. Now, uh, yeah, uh, on the first one, the installation is going on. Starting Windows. So leave it like that. It's okay. And I'm going to create quickly uh, three more machines. Client 02, Client 03, Client 04. So right click, new virtual machine, same thing. Just the name change. Client, second machine name, I'm putting Client 02. Next, Generation 2. Next. 512 use dynamic the same settings that I used in the first machine. I'm creating three machines now. Cancel. I'm gonna come back here with more machines so I could prove that uh, how useful those three types could be. So next, uh, do not use any network here. So I'm not using for the rest of the three machines. I'm not connecting any network card for that. So not connected should be the network setting. Next, hard disk should be same. I'm not changing anything. Uh, and install operating system later. That's exactly because I do not want to install any operating system for the next three machines. So install operating system later for the next three machines. Next and finito. So this is the second machine, which is just empty and we should just leave it empty. Again, third machine, next, virtual machine, uh, client 03, next, generation 2, next, 512 and use dynamic, next, not connected to the configure networking, next, same hard disk, next, install up until later, next, finish. So second machine the same way and the third machine also exactly the same settings. Client 04, next, generation 2, next, use dynamic. So total of four extra three machines which should be empty without network card connection. So no network card here. Next, same hard disk, uh, install operating system later, next, finito. So everyone knows the configuration of the next three machines? Yes, thank you. So the next three virtual machines have no network card and uh, that's it. So now, once uh, everyone has created the three machines, everyone is done? Yeah, first one, yeah, let it go, let it install. Uh, we just need to create three machines while the first one can keep installing and you know you going ahead. Error, you so can create virtual uh, maybe you run out of disk space. I think. Yeah, I lower down the because my disk space from my VM on VM. 
<coughs> oh. It's okay. Go for just uh, whatever you want to credit. Keep it there. Two machines created or three? You're on the first one? Okay. You need some space. But anyway, uh, even you can just create one. Oh, you cannot even create extra one, right? Okay. Ouch. So you need to have some space, otherwise mm, sit back and enjoy the show. Oh. Yikes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. You can even put it lesser. Yeah. Oh. So you guys have how much space in the laptop? Okay. Yeah, it completely. So, okay. completely. Yep. Oh, mm. uh, so you guys have in your 2012. What is the local disk space there, remaining in the? Yeah. You could. So, what is the free disk space on your uh, Windows 2012? Free disk space. So, your Windows 2012 machine. Does it look like uh, Z's? I have 84 GB available. Oh, in the Windows 2012 where you install Hyper-V? Yeah. Oh, and your, so can you re reduce it to 10 gigs or five gigs? Yeah. Okay, so three machines created by everyone? Yes. Okay. So let's go back to the Hyper-V uh, uh, virtual uh, switch manager. So after creating these three extra machines, I am creating virtual switch. I'm clicking the virtual switch manager on the right side. Everyone there? Okay. So uh, there's a new virtual switch uh, network switch. Uh, it's asking to create external. Let's uh, click external. what does it say for external what does it say for internal and what does it say for private so when we click external it says creates a virtual switch that binds to the physical network adopter so that virtual machines can access a physical network this is the option in vmware workstation as bridged the bridge option connects our virtual machine to the physical network right so external is that option in hyper-v okay let's click create new virtual switch is external switch v switch external v switch and it is uh, we can bind this switch to this network card let's see if it lets us do that apply yeah we click external and click new virtual switch click external click new virtual switch press yes and it should give this error failed while adding virtual switch Ethernet switch connection because so the network card is already bound to the max of virtual uh, switch protocol so we already connected the physical network adopter to that virtual machine right so if I so you will not be able to create external switch because the network card is already bound to that uh, you know virtual machine so I cannot do that so what do I do I go to that network card and I I will try to remove uh, this network card so right click no so cancel out so just cancel out from here first thing we tried to create an external switch and we could not bind it to the network card and why we could not bind because it is already bound to a virtual machine which virtual machine it is bound to we, the one which where we're installing windows whatever windows 7 windows 8 right how do we remove that network card from that virtual machine right now right click the virtual machine like this right click the virtual machine go to settings 
while it is doing the installation it's okay right click the virtual machine go to settings and network adapter is here so can we click and select not connected everyone can do that not connected so the network card it was connected to we have removed that so the machine on which windows is being installed go to the settings and go to the network adapter like this and just select not connected and click apply and press ok now the physical network adapter is not bound to this virtual machine okay if that's the case yeah 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 keep it going yeah which is okay even if we disconnect the network card doesn't matter keep the installation running so virtual switch manager here and in the machine so like this settings you're in the settings of the machine do you see the network card adapter here so click here not connected all right so first I wanted to show that that if you bind this network card to a virtual machine then you cannot create a virtual switch because network card can be bound to any one thing right so now we have unbound that so what do we do we'll try to create the external virtual switch again let's see if there's an error coming here so I'm going to go back after <laughs> removing the binding from this machine so new virtual switch network uh, here and click external which is already selected again click create virtual switch and again I'm gonna give the external V switch and external it's supposed to be bound to a network card which is it already is if I click apply and press yes it failed again now what does it say external adapter is already bound to the Microsoft virtual switch protocol okay let's click close again cancel out of this again and this time uh, I need to go to again virtual switch manager and right click this network adapter and okay everyone has this network adapter we're not gonna go for new virtual switch right we're gonna go for this network adapter directly now and click remove try to click remove and does it say does it show like this strike out apply yes it's gone yeah press ok now your virtual machine manager should look like this no virtual adapter at all now if we select connect it to the external switch does it work so let's again go to new virtual network switch external create virtual switch name it name it what uh, external v switch and let's uh, it's already showing this apply yes let's then let's let's go with the next uh, switches and then come back to this an internal error occurred while processing the results of creating a new virtual switch to this is not the same error so so there's a error that is not the same no this means some of some people will get this error others like me I will try this again two or three times welcome to Microsoft if this error comes it's just like yeah uh, uh, can you try it again it's like you know this so cancel virtual switch manager external create virtual switch this time I'm just gonna uh, type it E I'm sick and tired of typing in the whole name or external V switch and copy that name I don't know how many times I have to create that 
apply yes oh come on please because that error it just means try again so yeah this error is oh man what do you mean correct name ah. so okay I'm going to close this Hyper-V console yeah so I'm uh, closing and opening the console maybe it, it refreshes as well so and then opening that console again this error is just like you know uh, maybe we did not install the, all the updates maybe it's a bug inside that's not gonna work the first time but it's gonna work so external did I copy that name paste okay good it's always a blessing to be lazy same number yeah it's okay you could name it anyway just put one put two okay I hate this now should not be really oh it's turn off oh those whose uh, you know uh, external switch worked Di was your client tur turned off at that time because it has nothing to do with client just keep doing it and that's it uh, this time I'm gonna change the name <laughs> yeah okay let's just leave the default name and it will new virtual switch that sucks but anyway oh there is that virtual switch already created uh oh I don't want it another one no okay thank you for that error okay so I I have oh bo this one also created that's ah okay anyway so I'm just gonna remove this one I have just one switch created already but when I click apply press yes so I'll just try to press OK. How many have this created successfully? One, two, three, four. Oh, none of those. You, you, your similar. Um, if I press just OK, oh, it's still not gonna let me go. If I press cancel, and go again and curse this stupid software. Oh, <coughs> anyway, uh, so um. Let's create the second switch, which is internal switch. Yes, and then I'll go and try again for this. Otherwise, I'll restart that. So external virtual switch, it worked for some. It did not work for some. Yep. All right. How? If I go there and click uh, this external, uh, let me just check what else I did do here. So external create virtual switch and name it exactly the same and go for apply press yes and one day it's going to work maybe Monday maybe Sunday tomorrow maybe no that's the uh, wizard right now when I press OK uh, not K so today is not my external switch day so I'm just gonna go for <laughs> Internal switch. Huh? Oh. Okay, let's try that too. So <laughs> today is not my external switch day. Maybe internal and private switch day is there still. So same name here. I think Microsoft loves that name. Um, so apply, press yes. And we can keep on trying it till you know 6:30, and um, even after that. Ah. <laughs> okay, I'll go to my second server. Oh, you got it. So, what was the main key in this? Okay, again. So it's uh, the default is public, right? Public uh, oh. directory, Hyper-V. 
uh, you're talking about the virtual disk yeah, virtual okay we're talking about the the network cards we're stuck in okay so but you were able to do it on another path yeah. hey way to go man okay so um, I'm going for the internal switch now uh, because uh, of the desperate attempt to try to install that and it's not working so that sucks in uh, Microsoft when we do not install update it happens virtual switch manager go for uh, internal I'm going for the internal and those who are done with external can go for internal now <laughs> well yeah kind of that maybe there's a workaround like we are still doing a workaround okay so it's the internal switch now I'm creating a second switch called internal I'm renaming the internal uh, switch which is selected as internal and it's internal network here if we want to enable the VLAN ID we can do that and all the other switches if the machines connected to that switch needs to be on the same VLAN ID then same VLAN ID is to be there anyway we're gonna just keep it at least we need to create the internal switch and I hope there is no error otherwise I will okay there it is otherwise I will not throw out my laptop so then I'm going for the private switch create private switch name it private we switch and this is a private switch apply and okay so I have two switches created here in virtual uh, machine manager internal switch uh, private switch and I'm going to try with that cursed external switch again uh, there's some yeah we can do that too so I'm just gonna try it one more time because uh, you know uh, I just put it one this time and um, apply and and there's that error oh no it did not come till now and there's that error I'm just ready for that error so there is that it's not coming now hey it worked this time <laughs> so I just changed that name to one and I will introduce it. yeah Oh, okay. So you removed your network card from the Hyper V. From Viewware, okay. Cool. So it worked for me. You know, I just changed, put one here instead of switch. Uh, so welcome to the, you know, unpredictable Microsoft product. And Microsoft still has future, even after this kind of bug. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and now. You you can uh, we'll connect client two with internal switch, client three with external switch, client four with private switch. Okay, that was confusing. So client two, I'm gonna go and connect with private, then internal, then uh, external. So client two settings and network adapter. I'm going for private switch. So client two private switch client 2 private switch apply okay client 3 internal switch so network adapter client 3 internal switch apply okay client 4 okay I client 4 external So all different clients, so which switch we can connect client 1 to in order to get physical access. So can we connect two machines to the same switch or not? Can we, if we can connect two machines, we can connect 200 machines as well to the same switch, right? So let's connect our Windows based first machine to external switch as well. So now we have client 4 connected to virtual switch, external switch. Let's connect our machine 1 to the external switch as well. Let's see, do we? External switch here, 
apply does it give any error and what's the error so now we have client 1 and client 4 connected to the external switch so once you create a switch just like in yeah you were saying external and client 4 also external so what do we know by that uh, switch once created you can connect any number of clients to that switch once the switch has to be created so maybe there are 10 client machines they all need to be connected external to external switch so it's just like any normal uh, you know uh, switch you use in your Cisco lab uh, you can have according to the port numbers uh, 8 port switch 24 port switch 24 machines or 8 machines so once you create a switch now you can connect it to every client so guys if you have connected this uh, 1 and 4 to the external let's connect the rest of the two with the external as well so I'm going to connect all four to the external switch only and network adapter private switch I'm switching the private switch client to the external switch apply okay three settings network adapter it was on internal switch one client was on private switch one client was on internal switch now all four we have switched to external switch too much switching okay switching and routing okay so now all four so what what is the thing that we need to take from this that once you create a switch private switch all four can connect uh, internal switch or any client all number of clients can connect to that or external switch any number of clients can connect to that one switch all you need to uh, for you to have it is that you create three separate switches or can we create two separate external switches yes or no if we have another network card added to this virtual machine we can have a separate external switch created okay let's do that to the virtual first we will need to add the second network card to the Hyper-V virtual machine then we need to add that second network virtual card inside the hypervisor so I'm going to do that now uh, second server uh, settings I'm adding to the second server another network card add yes network adopter next uh, in you know could be anything finish okay now I'm adding a second network card to my Hyper-V machine because I need two external switches in my Hyper-V machine uh, the same client where I already am configuring everything else I am adding a second network card now those who already have a second network card they don't have to add that oh yeah uh, it could be anything we're not connecting to anything else we're just making internal connection yeah it doesn't matter second card sorry yeah NAT or bridge it doesn't matter anything so I have a second network card does it show here so if I go to the virtual switch manager now after adding a second network card um, and I click this uh, virtual switch manager and it's thinking forever now I'll click it again okay so I do not see a second network card or do I yeah I, I do so there it is so when I try to create uh, I will go to virtual switch manager again when I try to create external switch again I already have one external switch right and I have connected all four machines to that external switch suppose I have four new machines and they need to be connected to another external switch not that same external switch suppose uh, if you have external switch going on one external switch is uh, connected suppose these are the two external switches 
so one is connected to uh, NY branch and the second external switch is uh, directly connected to Toronto branch so you're adding second network card to redirect the rest of the machines suppose we have four more machines or one more machine that needs to be connected to the Toronto branch instead of the New York branch the first four machines are connected to the New York branch the second will be to the Toronto branch suppose if this is the case I'm adding an external switch again and this time well I'm just putting it Toronto branch just to know that oh this is suppose this is the scenario that uh, uh, you know I have to connect it to the Toronto branch so I'm just gonna drop down here type the external switch uh, type the name and then okay I'll just copy that name in in case that error keeps coming again and this is the number two cards network card I have so I'm just going to select the second network card click apply yes and there is that error uh, okay again and there is that error oh okay just thinking and there is whenever I say that error does not come that's why I'm saying that so and there is that error <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Where should I hit my head now? <laughs> okay. Apply. Table. God, man. I, no, no, no. When it, when the error comes in the background, it shows that. Once you cancel, it can go. If you press OK, it will keep on giving that error. So I'm going to cancel out again and go back there and one day I will be able to create that new switch, second switch and that will be my happiest day of my life. Apply, yes, and there is that error. No, I'm just gonna, not going to try that again. Okay. And there is that error. And there's that error. That error. <laughs> okay so and please don't ask that again yeah press yes so apply error apply error until one day Monday or Sunday you will get that working and there's a mouse yeah <laughs> and okay it's a 10 minute break guys <coughs> And obviously, you're gonna come after 15 minutes, but still, it's 10 minute break. Okay, it worked. Thank you. And uh, I tried it four or five times. Kick, keep on clicking apply. I know it, this product sucks. Okay, pause. And so, 10 10. Yeah, that too. 10 10. So, okay we have two network cards here and uh, we added the second network card I added the second network card already um, if I go to virtual switch manager uh, and uh, now I have external V switch first network card uh, which is also uh, uh, you know that external switch is connected to the first network card and then I added the second network card and created another virtual external switch and connected it to the second network card uh, so now uh, I can so all the machines are ad connected to the first network external switch now three and four I'm going to connect to the second external switch which I just created yeah you were saying yeah 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 so we have we should have two external switches right now one first external switch connect to the first network card second external so now machine client number three and four i'm going to right click and go going to network card and i'm connecting it to the toronto branch or the second external switch and apply okay so 
client three and four settings go to the network adapter and I'm connecting it to the second network card uh, which is also external switch second external switch so now client one and two are connected to the first external switch and client three and four are connected to the second external switch right so that's how we are playing with the virtual switch manager then there is that setting of hard disks uh, so yeah so we created internal private and external network cards so what is the purpose of uh, private network card anyone knows what is the purpose of private network card so <laughs> man do you, why did you copy Sumit? I mean that's not you should come up with your own material you should say separate when he say I saw you should say separate yeah now you have your own material and oh, okay anyway so <laughs> private so it creates a virtual switch that can be used only by the virtual machines that run on this physical computer so the virtual machines are only communicating with each other inside this Hyper-V. If those two virtual machines are connected to the private network card, they will only communicate with each other. But what is internal then? Creates a virtual switch that can be used only by the virtual machines that run on this physical computer and between the virtual machines and the physical computer. So, same as, exactly. So. In VMware, we have bridge, NAT, and host only. So host only in VMware is private in Hyper-V. NAT is internal uh, in Hyper-V, and it is uh, in VMware, it's NAT, and external is bridge in VMware. So internal, it will the virtual machines will communicate with each other as well as with the host. So internal is still host and the internal virtual machines uh, themselves connecting to each other. External is that the virtual machines will be connecting to the outside network. So private is virtual machines only talk to each other. Internal is uh, virtual machines talk to each other as well as the host. And bridge or the external in that case in Hyper-V, virtual machines connect to the outside network. So that's the main uh, three types of switches that are being offered here and then there is a virtual sand manager here but you should have guess what you should have so if this host is connected suppose I'm here uh, if this is the Hyper-V host where we had our clients uh, four clients uh, then there should be a sand network and uh, there should be storage area network here and there should be a sand switch here and the mouse is still coming and going anyway and then there should be HBA network cards or you know those network cards which support the uh, fiber optic network connected to that machine so if that is the case then we can use this virtual SAN manager otherwise okay. since we don't have that so we can just see sit back and enjoy the show I have that oh okay that I need to pause okay so we're back we were talking about something important and uh, <coughs> uh, for that I had to pause the video <coughs> so uh, let's go ahead and see what else we got so configure switches external internal and private we did that configure available MAC addresses so by default we have 255 MAC addresses to be assigned but we can modify it to have more uh, addresses so where are those MAC addresses and why they are there so if we go to virtual switch manager we see here MAC address so why there is a MAC address range given here just like in DHCP we have an IP address range there's a MAC address range because so it needs whatever clients we have they get a network card they need a MAC address because it's a virtual network card and they need a uh, unique MAC address in physical network cards of course MAC address is already uh, you know embedded into that uh, 
chip set. But here it's virtual machine. You delete it, you create it. You delete it, you create it. So you need to have a mechanism of uh, you know assigning MAC addresses to those newly created virtual machines with uh, network cards. So this is that area or range, and we can add the range as well, increase the range as well. So so there is that mechanism of uh, you know having a MAC address range. So okay, this uh, these are the screenshots. Okay, then there is inspect disk. So yeah, anyone question? Okay, so inspect disk just tells you about the virtual machine disk, how much it is taking space, and what is the maximum size. So if we go to our, uh, you know, Hyper-V, we can, this is the inspect disk. So if we have uh, selected any virtual machine, so if I am selecting my, uh, you know, my virtual machine which has the Windows 7, I can go to the inspect disk on my right side, and still select the actual virtual machine hard disk so where is it taking me when i click inspect disk it is taking me to this path what is this path this is the path where all the hard disks of the machines all the machines are located when you create a new machine this is the path where the hard disks are located so you want to inspect what uh client 2 oh i was supposed to so this is four megabyte current file size. That's huge, not huge. Uh, so dynamically expanding. So we gave 127 GB, but it says dynamically expanding. That means as per as per we install the software, it's going to occupy that space. So right now, this is an empty machine. Uh, it's four megabyte, but now. Uh, if I go back to inspect disk and go for the first machine, uh, this should have some space. Oh, it installed an operating system and still four megabyte. <laughs> Unbelievable! It should have. It should show like uh, at least one gigs. Uh, uh, if I shut down, why don't I try that? And Windows is still in shock. Uh, today it's not a Windows day. Still, Windows is our feature. So, and it's. So <laughs> today is the Linux day. <laughs> Five marks. <laughs> Who said that Linux day? <laughs> I did not. I did not. Now I recognize the voice. So yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for speaking again. Now I recognize it. Anyway, uh, so if I shut it down and now it should tell me the uh, stop succeeded. Okay. Now I go to inspect disk for the shutdown machine. And it's still four megabyte, yay! So it uh, officially sucks. Oh, anyway, did I say? Okay, I need to edit that at uh, three hours. Okay. Um, so uh, we can go for Hyper-V settings, and there is all those options. And from that, if we select the uh, live migration option, uh, but before that. So I'm gonna send you the steps for this because uh, it's gonna take longer time and you need to, so live migration. So guys, I'm gonna give you as an assignment and just like any other assignment which you didn't do, uh, please do that at least. No, some of many of the assignments you did, it's okay. Some of you did that. Okay, anyway, so live migration. You think it's difficult because uh, you know, uh, when you talk about migration, there's hundreds of things that you need to think. But in Hyper-V, it's mind-blowingly easy. And I was amazed that I don't have to set up like VMware. Not a third, you know, I don't need to set up an open filer. I don't need to set up a storage for that. It's like just, you know, you need to have those steps. So I'm gonna send you the step for live migration. And you need to create that, uh, you know, screenshots for that. So much fun. Uh, what about the screenshots? Hmm? For live migration, God. So yeah, screenshots should have your last name, <laughs> you know, <laughs> server name, on which you, sh in on which you did that. So thanks to Sumit, and you can you know uh, handle him outside. But <laughs> so do it on your test machines where your last name is showing as your domain name and your machine name. Uh, 
So, okay. So, um, <laughs> God, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's go ahead. There are options uh, in edit disk which are compact, convert, expand, and shrink. So first of all, uh, yeah, I was talking about that uh, assignment. So I'm going to send you all the steps. Uh, maybe it's a PDF file uh, from somewhere. So you need to really follow that and create screenshots. There are many online forums where the live migration screenshots are there. Thank God that they have their own machine by their name showing there. So even if you send that screenshot, Hey, I have Photoshop uh, scanner software or any <laughs> editor software. So the photo has been edited or not. Yeah, see? Uh, okay, nothing to do with, you know. Uh, okay, so compact, convert, expand. So what is the difference between compact and shrink? Compact compress without any size, size, but the shrink the Off? Okay, so what is the purpose of compact if it does not more space within the disk? Within the disk what shrink? shrink actually shrinks the physical or not physical, yeah. the actual disk. So compact, this option compacts the file size of virtual hard disk. The storage capacity of the virtual hard disk remains the same. So file size of the virtual hard disk is, you know, compacted. But the storage capacity, suppose it was 127 GB, the storage capacity remains the same. So then if it was compact, then what is shrink? So, so the file size of the VHDX, right? Whatever the file size was taking on the disk. Shrink is, this option reduces the storage capacity of the virtual disk. Can you give me an example of that? <coughs> reduces the storage capacity of the virtual disk. So it, if it was 127 GB, so instead of 127, we can shrink it to any lesser size. Uh, convert. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, so, what is uh, convert? So we had two types of VHDs. One was Windows, Windows Server 2008, Hyper-V, and the second one was is Windows 2012 uh, Hyper-V VHDX. So it can convert back and forth. Uh, what is expand? This option expands the capacity of the virtual hard disk. It's going to expand. Uh, edit disk. Uh, so through this, to this. So let's create a new virtual machine. Take a snapshot. Da, da, da. Okay. Resource metering. So uh, first of all, if I go to the edit disk right now, what options I have here? Edit disk. So I go to the edit disk, and there is that wizard opens. Next, then it asks, where is the virtual disk file located? So this is the folder. Uh, editing the following types of virtual disk might result in data loss. Virtual disk in a differencing disk, uh, virtual hard disk dot a VHD associated with the virtual machine checkpoints. So checkpoints when you create or snapshots, you should not shrink or compact those. And virtual hard disk associated with a virtual machine that has a replication enabled. So you're going to be enabling the replication for the virtual machine. So you should not be trying compacting or shrinking at that time as well. If I go to browse here, um, so if I, it's not going to go next until I choose something from here, right? So um, this is AVHDX. This is the uh, checkpoint that I created. What is a checkpoint? So in VMware, it is called snapshot. What is snapshot? <laughs> Checkpoint. It's a checkpoint. Okay, <laughs> so let's go ahead. So this is a snapshot. Right-click this and snapshot.
take snapshot when I click take snapshot and now whatever configuration I have done till now they will it will save that configuration in a file when I can revert back to that snapshot so that is called checkpoint in Hyper-V uh, point in time uh, snapshot or configuration saving so I'm just going for client 2 double click that so the hard disk is selected I've started from edit disk here so next now we have four options here compact convert and expand yeah it's, it's supposed to be four if you choose uh, another type of file so I'm gonna show that too for now it's uh, showing this uh, compact convert expand so if you want to compact this disk click that so it already is four megabyte poor guy so uh, if I just compact it more it's going to just <laughs> scream for uh, you know help and call me crazy so I'm not converting and compacting so convert so that was the four one the shrink is not working no, or the convert. convert is not there so let's go ahead next okay four five marks before ten marks before now two marks I'm just, just giving a discount now oh the book says the blame it on the book now yeah okay yeah which, which book are you talking about all the time oh what happened you didn't even know what you're talking about good morning good morning Oh, you're sleeping? Oh, yeah, at least you're honest, you know, just sleeping. Sleeping? God, man! Oh, okay, before. So. Then it's okay. Still, why did you say what happened? Uh, so, anyway, <laughs> just kidding. So, uh, convert, expand. So, uh, we cannot compact because it's already, you know, smaller than this, whatever space can be between these fingers. So, expand let's expand that so this option expands the capacity of the virtual disk yeah we can expand that right so new size will be 128 maximum 64 terabyte can be given so okay let's not give 64 63 out of bounds specify a number between 128 and 65000 so current size is what size do you want to make this virtual drive okay yeah you're right I mean I should go ahead it does not detect terabyte god you're right so six four zero 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 Nacost and new virtual disk sixty three thousand GB da -da 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 -da. and my laptop is about to blow up oh no so inspect disk let's see what mess did I create uh, was it client one or two uh, hey there's that corner it was two right so, uh, hey welcome to Microsoft yet again oh I uh, yeah it was one I think yeah 61 TB so it expanded to this one but because it is dynamically expanding this is the maximum capacity I have put there so whenever I install that much software and games and whatever then it's going to reach here and it's gonna say finally hey you read 61 terabyte for God's sake get a life so anyway so close so this is expanded uh, there are uh, uh, further settings here that let's go there so this was the resource metering uh, this is enabled this me this does what resource metering uh, as the name says it will start giving you alerts on how much memory and processor and hard disk is being used by your virtual machines but this has to be enabled inside the PowerShell in Hyper-V so uh, we can give get dash VM so uh, you have this already so I think I gave you this PDF file yeah and it has okay it does not have 
Oh, it's uh, showing me pass through disk. See, this is how much effort uh, a genius guy had put that. I need to meet that guy. I mean, whoever made that document. Here. Anyway, so uh, I'm going to enable this uh, resource metering and it's going to be get dash vm minus computer name and in our case I think it's server 1 and then enable dash vm resource metering so I'm going to start quickly uh, typing that there in Hyper-V uh, in PowerShell uh, by okay so PowerShell and how can I make the font very 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 big uh, properties font and oh that's like mucho big so now everybody can see that right all right so uh, get uh, first uh, if it's the first time I'm opening this so what's the command for that set dash exe and press tab execution policy unrestricted so this means allow me to please run any command from now on from today and then I am running this uh, command uh, get dash vm minus computer name so let me know uh, oh not let me know I need to know my computer name server 2 okay get dash vm minus comp press tab computer name uh, server 02 and then pipe and mr. pipe is there and then enable VM resource metering so enable E N A B L E dash R E S and press tab oh okay it not to the second line yeah resource press tab is there anything resource oh that's not good VM resource metering exactly thank you thank you VM resource metering and there you go there you go what okay VM yeah it's just adding its own so instead of VM R if we do and remote replication resource metering there you go so that's it presenter and uh, if it does not say anything this means what it is mucho successful so I can just put that command again so we could all see now and yeah if nothing happens and there is no red error red words this means the command completed successfully uh, so resource metering is enabled and uh, we can just from time to time check our uh, uh, you know that uh, the event viewer or also there are many other uh, partial commands to know uh, what is the memory being used now? What is the processing being used now? Good luck searching for that uh, those partial commands. Thank you very much. Oh, no, so I'm just gonna send you the uh, partial commands as well. I can see now that everyone is so excited that only a few people are even looking up to the board. Uh, oh, everyone's back. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Oh, oh, then it's okay. So yeah, stay excited and this is good. Yeah. So, pass through disk. How to configure pass through disk? And uh, oh, differencing disk as well. Uh, so there is that differencing option here, and then there's a pass through disk. So let me go with the uh, uh, straightforward, easier option first. So, what was the one liner for pass through disk? It does what? Local. Local. That's good. Local what? Huh? Local access. Local access. That's even better. I still don't get what you're trying to say. Oh, okay. Local network. Local area. So, does anyone know a proper sentence for pass through disk? It does what? Local storage access for virtual machines and so any applications that have been installed on virtual machines that needs more input output speed uh, they will that application will get that access so the first thing to do is if you want to allow one uh, virtual machine to have local disk access you need to add a new 
hard disk to your host VMware machine. In our case, we have a virtual machine which is acting as a host for these uh, client machines. So I'm going to add a new hard disk. So let me just show you if uh, without adding a new hard disk how it looks and then with adding the new hard disk how it looks. Um, so if I go for any virtual machine here, so suppose I want the password is for this virtual machine. Uh, sorry, right click next settings. So if I go to the hard disk here, uh, this physical disk, it's grayed out right now. So the machine has to be off and then you need to change the path from virtual hard disk to physical hard disk here, right? So now it looks like this and it's the client one. So then I go to the settings and add a new hard disk. Next, 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 next. Finito. So as soon as we have a new hard disk, uh, we don't need to format that hard disk. It has to be in its uh, unformatted form. So now when I go back to the same virtual machine settings, go to the hard drive and there you go. The physical disk is now no longer grayed out. There is a unformatted hard disk that it detects that there. If you have a empty hard disk but it is formatted, it's never going to detect that. So you have to remove those partition, that partition and keep it uh, or show it unformatted then it will show that. And click apply and press ok and this machine has now uh, is now enabled for local storage hard disk access. So it, this machine directly installs everything on the local hard disk. So that's yeah it's a host uh, of uh, host hard disk exactly so it's just easy that you add a hard disk and then you uh, try to do that yeah pass through option is uh, so it is called something else but it also uh, can offer local hard disk access for certain specific scenarios VMware workstation inside the VMware workstation for that Hyper-V machine. No, new so Hyper-V host. New host. Yes. Yeah, for the host. Yeah, disk. New disk for the host. Okay, uh, this and then we go for differencing. Yay! So we did resource metering. It requires just one partial command. Uh, then we uh, can do the differential disk uh, till 7.30 and uh, Oh, I love that reaction. It's like, oh. it's like, so, <laughs> so, uh, hmm. Hey, since we have enough time till at least six thirty, why don't we do replication here? Oh, that's like, uh. We prefer to do it ourselves. Yeah. So, yeah, screenshots are coming, right? Then for for the replication. So, uh, okay, this is the hard disk uh, that we need to add. So I'm just gonna go for a separate hard disk. I'm gonna select the VHDX. Then I'm gonna select the differencing, and then uh, place it somewhere. Configure disk, and then we need to attach that to that virtual machine uh, so that will be just another option so uh, where do I go for that right click this uh, this uh, server 2 click new and go for new hard disk and we have a floppy disk here as well yay floppy disk okay anyway hard disk and uh, we can go for next VHDX the latest format and then we have dynamically expanding hard disk we can create fixed size or differencing right so fixed size will be what <coughs> which means what uh, 
So it will do what? It will be? For <laughs> You're about to say the correct thing, but you know, and then you divert. Okay. Then divert. Then I try to take you back. Okay. Tell me. Yeah. You're saying? Thick. Oh, thick. Okay. Thick. Yeah. Who are you referring? I'm a smart guy, man. What do you mean? What do you mean? Okay, I've been eating samosas all this fasting month, but that doesn't mean I'm thick. God! What do you mean thick? Uh, okay, anyway. So, <laughs> so, fixed disc means what? If, yeah. So, when you, suppose I create a fixed disc, so my hard disk, laptop hard disk has 50 GB free space and I give the size of the fixed disk as 65 GB so when I click finish for that hard disk what happens it's not enough space my free disk space is 50 GB on my laptop and the fixed disk space I'm giving 65 GB it's gonna say not enough space because because it occupies at once all the space we write there so if I go for fixed disk like this and go next and go next so 127 GB here uh, it's going to occupy right away every all 127 GB it needs physically on our host machine again take okay five marks five marks <laughs> So what we're trying to dynamically expanding we know that as we install the software uh, It's going to expand that uh, Differencing Differencing is not thick Oh thin yeah, okay thin yeah five plus yeah, so okay anyway, so uh, This type of disk is associated in a parent-child relationship with another disk that you want to leave intact You can make changes to the data or operating system without affecting the parent disk Okay, so differencing disk is going to have all the changes saved. Whatever application you install, this differencing disk will take all those changes. So I, I selected the differencing disk and then its new virtual disk name. I'm just going to change that name to uh, diff disk 01. And it's saved on the same hard disk uh, path. And uh, specify the virtual hard disk that you want to use as the parent for the new differencing virtual disk so which hard disk parent disk will adopt this differencing disk because it says parent so uh, um, okay anyway client one so the client one dot vhdx uh, will have this differencing disk by the name of uh, diff disk 01 next finito and since it is the differencing disk of this machine so oh I should close that and first inspect that oh it did not so inspect disk does this tell me anything the difference is there uh, directly expanding it does inspect disk does not tell me if I created this as a uh, I created in, uh, differencing disk for that so what's the proof that it is a differencing disk settings if I go to the hard drive, does it show anywhere? Oh, it's already passed through disk. I've added the differencing as well. Anyway, so I'm just gonna try to connect there and start the machine. And one day when this machine reaches the you know start option, then we're gonna try to see if there is a second disk uh, showing there as a differencing disk. So. Um, <coughs> Uh, what I'm trying to do here is oh you know what uh, I should not be showing that so guys uh, uh, this difference in disk uh, is created this way pass through disk we have done uh, we have done the resource metering then we played with the switches uh, the most important thing is after that replication so you have already two <coughs> hyper V set up keep it that way at home as well because you need to do that replication it requires uh, steps uh, like 20 or 30 steps I'm gonna send you the step-by-step -step document 
uh, hopefully I'll send you now uh, so try to carefully try to set that up and take all the screenshots and try to make it this way try to uh, so all you know page this is ob what are the objectives okay you want to replicate workaround did we use a workaround no we did not uh, for replication lab install new v VM virtual switches so I've sent you already this sample PDF you can see that and you know just try to page number all the things uh, and then you know send that and try uh, so uh, try to put the titles there like this for the lab for the this Hyper-V lab and, uh, all the steps the slides, the slides, yeah uh, oh, you need it or no, you want no, no, no. okay Yo, so okay uh, I'm just gonna stop the video here and uh,